Looks like we're live. All right. It's going to take a second. Let's see what it looks like on. Oh, it's better looking. In the in the OBS software, it looks pretty like blanched out, like overly saturated. But when I click on the uh, YouTube Studio set, it doesn't look horrible. It looks better. So I won't get too paranoid about the the brightness of it. Hey, Bob, what's going on? and I'm alive. Ken, what's going on? got a pinch nerve in my neck so my hands a little tingly uh, I I think I did it when uh, so Beth and I were gone last last weekend that's why I wasn't here on Monday we were out of town um, I was and I shot a video up there still editing it got a long way to go <laughs> so uh, but it's gonna be my next video hey Julie what's going on uh, it's going to be my next, uh, uh, probably my next video. I don't know. Um, um, now, I don't, I doubt that there's been a bump at all. Let me just look at my YouTube analytics. Yeah, not really. Um, it's it's kind of been kind of slow because I haven't done any new videos. So, you know. This is pretty low for the last 48 hours, 5,300 views in the last 48 hours. So it's definitely settling a little bit because I haven't done any. Uh, well, for one thing, I've taken two two weeks, two Mondays off in a in a short period of time, so that doesn't help. Hey, Larry, what's going on? Um, and yeah, Paul Davids came over and hung out. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and I'll see him again on Friday at the NAMM show. But, um, yeah, we'll talk about, we'll talk about the Paul Davids thing in a little bit. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to continue talking about the walking bass thing, but I'm just going to show you a real simple, we're just going to do the first two chords of the blues progression. I feel like I kind of was giving you an overview last time, two weeks ago, I was kind of giving you like, here's a big picture. Here's how it can be used kind of thing where you can be a bass player and a guitar player to accompany somebody. Um, you know, uh, and, but what I want to do is just take a little snippet of that. We're just going to do the first two bars, the one to the four chord and that way. Hey, hey, Bruce. Um, yeah, I don't think Holly's going to be here today. Uh, she's got some stuff to deal with. Um, Dennis, I'm waiting for Dennis, see if Dennis shows up. Um, and, uh, hey, Holly's here. Well, Holly, I can, will you, are you going to have to take off in a bit, or are you done with your meeting? Okay, 
I got it, Holly. Yeah. Okay. So I, I can I can cut to the Paul Paul Davids thing. Um, let me see. I'm gonna post a photo. I gotta I gotta move it over to the to this computer here. I don't know if it's. Let me try to airdrop it. Um. Boop, 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 airdrop. Okay. Hey, there it is. Okay, I'm dropping that one. I'll drop another one here. Hold on. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, oh, did I select two photos? Okay, I don't want to do that. Hold on a second. Airdrop this one. Oh, there was a shortcut. I didn't see. Okay. Done. Now, um, where are these? They're going to be in here. Aha. So, um, boop. Oh, well, is that too big a file? I thought I could just drop it in there. Weird. Let me uh, add image, image slideshow. No, I just want to add an image. Oh, weird. I don't know why that won't dry again. Like I said, I wonder if it's just too big. Let me uh, let me duplicate this and reduce the size. Tools. There we go. Adjust size. Yeah, it's a big photo. Let me go 1200 or something. Let me see what that looks like. All right. Much smaller. All right. Let's see if it drops. Nope. Still didn't drop in. That's weird. I thought I could just. <sighs> do I have to? Hold on. Sorry. Does it have to be on my desktop to do that? Because I'm always dropping stuff in from the desktop. That's weird. Like this, I could drop in. Yeah, look at that. See, that dropped in fine. Although that's a lot smaller. But that's my, that was my uh, view count from uh, uh, see. Remove. All right. Maybe I have to go even smaller. Let me go even smaller, sorry. Hold on a second. Anyway, Paul Davids was here. He reached out to me. Um, let me go half the size. Let's see what that looks like. Weird. Now, I know I've put bigger files in here before. Let me drag, see if it goes into this window. No. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> it's so frustrating. It's like, I, I, it didn't have a problem. Oh, everybody's talking without me. You're, oh, Julie, you're just a baby. <laughs> yeah, you got pretty, pretty fast typing skills for a baby. Um, so, yeah, so Paul, Paul David, I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if I, no, you can't see that. That's too much light. Uh, oh, wait, I got to go like that. Yeah, there we are. Me and Paul, and that's not very, now it's going to be all blurry. Um, but uh, he emailed me um, a couple of weeks ago and asked if he could film a video about something. And I said, of course. <laughs> Are you kidding? And uh, so we, we filmed for about two hours. Uh, he was a little... At the end, he was like, oh, man, it's like we could have made 10 videos of all the stuff we talked about. Um, and uh, um, I didn't film any, um, but uh, uh, so I was going to um, maybe do a little behind the scenes stuff, but uh, it's fine. Um, in fact, Alex was here, but he didn't come and tell me he was here. I asked him if he wanted to come and film some behind the scenes stuff. And uh, so anyway, it's it's all good. Um, but, uh, I'll see him on Friday at the NAMM show. 
we're gonna hang out a little bit but uh, yeah so Paul came over um, uh, yeah he's a he's a he's a very good he's a very good youtuber his videos look great his his uh, he plays great he's a great player um, and you know the YouTube thing is like a big a big deal you know when you've got three million subscribers that's a good income um, so I'm not gonna tell you what we talked about I'll let him release it when it comes out um, and then um, hopefully we can do some more videos I mean he's not gonna be in LA again anytime soon uh, probably next year for Nam. I think he's gone to every Nam the last six years or something like that so um, and if you don't know, NAM is National Association of Music Merchants. It's a giant convention that's held at the Anaheim Convention Center every year. Of course, COVID kind of messed it up. In fact, right before COVID, I got really sick uh, before the lockdowns because I went to NAM show and everybody, it, you know, it's just a ton of people. Uh, probably one fourth of the exhibitors are from China. And so, about, and most of those are, I think, from Wuhan because... Um, that's where a lot of the factories are and the, the manufacturing for the guitar companies are in that area or nearby. So we, you ended up with, I think we all got COVID, you know, back in January of, of 2020. Everyone I know afterwards was like, oh man, I'm so sick. And I, I just felt weird. I didn't ever really get sick enough where I couldn't work or anything. I just felt weird. And, and, uh, um, and then that's then like, what was it a month later two months later that was when everything got shut down so um so then they didn't have an amp show the next year but and then the, two years ago was normally it's in january every year a winter nam and it's the biggest of the nams i think there's one in germany that's pretty big and then there's one in nashville that's smaller in the summer um and i don't think they've done that one since 2020 but i could be wrong but they did one here in June last year. It didn't go. It wasn't going to be very. There wasn't going to be very many exhibitors there. But what it is is all of the anybody that has anything to do with the music, um, not the music business necessarily, not the record companies, but it was like guitar manufacturers, keyboard manufacturers, uh, software designers for music, software DJ equipment. Um, Horns, trumpets, you know, all that stuff. Drums, all the drum companies are there. All the percussion companies are there. Um, you know, all, like I said, you know, like um, Finale Music is there that makes Finale software for making music. And it's it's not open to the public. In fact, it used to be free, but I had to pay for my badge. So I don't, you know, we'll see. I mean, it's a write-off, but... Normally, I, I've never had to pay for a badge before, but maybe because I, I hit up Elixir a little too late. But Elixir, you know, Taylor Elixir, uh, Voodoo Lab, a bunch of different companies have given me badges in the past. You, you have to have some kind of connection to get in there. Um, and it can be kind of crazy. Like, Friday is usually just insane. And that's when I'm going to be going, I think. Friday's the plan, anyway. Um, I think Alex and I are going to go together. Um, uh, oh, pin the Discord link. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. So, yeah, no, we had a great time. We had a lot of fun. Um, he, he had his um, videographer with him. So, he, he, you know, kind of a two-camera shoot. They had, I think they were Sony, what are the, the S7s or the D7s? Really nice cameras. I was, I was talking to him about that. Like, how do you get that, you know, it, the, the, um, the pull focus thing, which is, like, really cool looking. Like, where he's in focus, but the stuff behind him is kind of blurry. And I think I, you can kind of do that. I think I can create a mask and do that. Um, in uh, uh, Final Cut Pro. So I think I can actually create a mask that follows me, follows my head or whatever, but then behind me, kind of like, like a Zoom meeting. 
but that might look weird. It looks much better if you do a pull focus thing. And I have a, a lens for my camera that's called a Nifty 50. I hardly ever use it, but it's really great for close up stuff, but it's also great for pulled focus. But I've never used it for a video. I don't know if it would work for a video, but I've used it for still photos. One away from 300 lessons, I know, crazy, right? 300 COVID lessons. Uh, z number one was March 15th, 2020, I think, or March 16th. Um, oh, I didn't pin the link. Sorry. I posted it, but I didn't pin it. Let me pin it. Okay. Pinning link. Whoops. You guys are, there it is. Pin message. Okay. It should pin in a second. Um, so we'll see, uh, like I said, Paul Davids did a video about a specific topic, which like, I don't want to go into right now. I'll let him, I'll let him release that. Um, and it'll help. It, it, it's about me basically. <laughs> so. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see what happens with, you know, my channel. I would love for me to double my subscribers. That would be kind of cool. Um, and I've got a lot of videos up there for people to check out and catch up on, but they're going to be a little disappointed if they're used to the quality of Paul Davids. Um, but, um, uh, regardless, um, it, it will definitely increase the exposure to my channel. We'll probably see some new people here at least for a while. And uh, Paul doesn't really ever go live. I don't think I've ever seen him go live. Um, he suggested, because I had, we talked about so many things and they filmed everything. So it was like, I think probably with two cameras, it was almost four hours of footage to go through. <laughs> uh, and he said, I should do some YouTube shorts, which actually is not a bad idea. I had a, I, I was doing TikTok for a while and I decided to take it off my phone. Just not that I, have any secrets or anything like that like I don't work for the government or anything but I just decided to take it off my phone just because I was like yeah I don't know not too sure about it um, so um, the um, uh, uh, sorry so the so I had some YouTube I mean I had some TikTok videos one in particular that kind of got a couple hundred thousand views so I could probably um, do some of those and uh, and start posing. I said, can you monetize them? I've never seen an ad on a YouTube short, but if it if a YouTube short takes off, it would generate revenue or bring in people to my YouTube channel. So I'm thinking about doing that. Um, okay, so we're about 20, how many minutes in? 20 minutes in? I should get to the lesson. 18 minutes in, okay, <laughs> it's duly noted. Um, and uh, so what I want to do is just kind of review two chords for you. Remember we talked about we talked about how you can take any seventh chord down to just two notes. A seventh chord would normally have four notes. The root, the third, the fifth, and the seventh. Um, but you, if you just play the third and the seventh, if you have a bass player, that will imply enough for you to uh, play a song. And um, the third tells you if it's a major or minor chord. The seventh tells you if it's dominant seventh or... Um, or a uh, major seventh sound, okay? Um, so, uh, for example, you can do this with me. Hit the open A string, okay? So that's our bass, that's our bass player. The open A string, the fifth string, all right? If you play the fifth fret and the sixth fret on the fourth string and the third string, that implies, just play the notes like that, and I'm pushing down and then letting up. That's how I'm getting the short stabs. I'm not muting necessarily over here. I could do it that way too. I could do it both ways. But anyway, there's your A7. Okay, there's our seventh right here and here's the third. Dominant seventh, major third. Don't worry about that. No quiz on that. So everybody take a sip, a celebratory sip. There won't be a quiz on that. Now, if I wanted to imply an A major seven, I would move this up, okay? So now I'm at open A string, which is the bass player, not you, and then we've got the sixth fret and the sixth fret on the middle two strings. So you could just play like that, and if the bass player's playing an A note, You might 
want to try to practice like uh, maybe doing different rhythms. Very Brazilian. And if I just move those down here to the fifth fret, that would be A minor. So there's all basically the three seventh chords that you, you typically play. We have a, a dominant seventh, a major seventh, and a minor seventh. So this would be A7, A major seven, and A minor seven. The, now you're going, well, you could do this one too. And that's also true. And that one is less common, but that one would be a minor, A minor with a major seventh is what you would call that. Kind of sounds very augmented, but it's, and it would usually, oftentimes those chords are used as a transition from like A minor to A minor seven. So I'm taking that A down to G sharp, down to G, and I end up ultimately with an A minor seven, okay? So that my point of showing you this is that with just two notes, I can apply a seventh chord. Back to where we were a couple weeks ago, um, we were implying a G seventh chord with these two notes. Okay, I'm at the third fret, middle two strings, three and four. And then if I go down two frets, that is C. That would work for a C7 chord. All right. Back to G. G7. Down two, one fret, and there's C7. So I'm at the second fret and the third fret on the middle two strings. A um, little interesting note, when I'm playing the G, this is the seventh, this is the third. When I go down to C, this is the third and this is the seventh. The, the seventh and thirds reverse themselves. If I'd, if I'd gone from this G to this C, there would be seventh, third. I'm sorry, yeah, seventh, third, seventh, third. But I didn't, I wanted to go right here. And there's two on, ev you know, on every octave. Like I could do G7 this way, or I could do this way. Those are both G7s. They're both G7s without Gs or, or Ds. Uh, the fifth is unnecessary. So what we're playing is the, the, the third and the seventh, and then the bass player is going to probably play the root at some point. If it's a walking bass line, chances are the bass player is going to hit the root on beat one. That's kind of the goal. All right? I'm trying not to tilt my head back. That's when I trigger this numbness. I hate it. And I've got to do... I'm working on uh, the... I got Irish Bazooki. I've done one of three songs that I'm doing for a video game. I can't talk about any more than that, but um, but that's uh, I did get a, an album in the mail the other day, an album and a CD of a of, of, of game score Moss Book Two. Um, I never I've never played it. I, I was watching a little bit of it on YouTube gameplay just to see what it was about. Um, and um, I guess it's a pretty popular game. I don't know. Moss. You ever, anybody ever played Moss? M-O-S-S. -S. Um, and they sent me the album, but <laughs> they spelled my name wrong on the album. <laughs> I sent a screenshot to the composer, and he's like, oh, yeah, well, you're an imposter then. <laughs> I can't tell you how often my name is, is spelled wrong. So I don't really, I don't get, I'm not too worried about it. People can find me. Okay, so we have G and we have C. So what I want to do is I just want to do a little snippet of, we're going to do the first two chords of a blues progression. We're going to do the one chord and then the four chord. And we're just going to make a loop out of that. And, and if you can get that down, then that means you can get a lot more stuff down. Does that make sense? Oh, you're on your iPad. Okay, AJ, well, no worries. Uh... Yeah, the mods are there to help. De is Dennis here yet? Have I seen Dennis? So uh, uh, Paul is from uh, Rotterdam. And when Beth and I were in Holland a few years ago, um, we were not far. We went to The Hague uh, one day. We went to also went to Harlem. Um, and we were, our, but our, our uh, hotel was in, um, it was in Amsterdam. So, um but, um, yeah, so that's, uh, so we kind of took the train around a couple different places. It was fun. It was fun. So we have the G, and then we have the C. All right. G7, 
C7, G7. I mean, if you want, you can see this G7 chord. And you can see in the middle of that are those two notes. And if you play this C7, have you ever played that C7 before? You can see those two notes are right there and also the fourth and fifth or fourth and third string. Okay, now let's let's learn a bass line just for those two chords. All right, so let's just do G, A, B, D, B. So we're outlining the G triad, the G major triad, and I'm doing that with my thumb. So I'm getting the, the with my second finger. I'm getting the third fret of the bottom string, then the second fret of the fifth string. And then the fifth fret of the fifth string, and then back to the second fret. Okay, let's do that together. Root, third, doesn't hurt to think about that, that, but there won't be a quiz on this. Root, or one, three, five, one. Now we might finger it differently because what, what I want to do is get that just once I want to hit that that little guide the guide tones for G7 I'm only gonna hit it once I'm gonna hit it on the end of one so it's gonna be one and two three four one and two and we can just loop this but so now I'm gonna play let's let's just do the bass line again but I'm gonna play I want you to play it the way I'm fingering it this way first finger then first finger all right you see that third fret and second fret with the same finger and then you can reach your pinky out and the reason is because when I do this I'm gonna to want to use my second and third finger for this okay I could use my third and fourth that would work also and you might have you might find yourself having to uh, find ways to finger um, find ways to finger uh, the chords in in odd ways because you have a certain bass line you want to play and it's like dang it I need that finger so I'm gonna to have to play the chord with this finger or whatever or use these two fingers instead and so that's a say, see you later Holly she's already gone <laughs> by the time I got that message she's gone um, so um, so yeah you may have to do some odd fingers like this where I'm using the same finger two times, actually three times in a row here. But you'd be surprised how, fa how fast you can do it once you, you have the finger memory of it. I think I'm trying, I try, try not to look up at the camera. <laughs> I want to look you in the eye. But um, if I tilt my head back, I'm going to pinch that nerve. I already pinched the nerve. I, oh, I was going to say, Beth and I were coming back from Idlewild, and it was really foggy, and it was 32 degrees, and there was water because all the snow was melting, so there was water everywhere. And there were we when we were walking, we, we would hit patches of ice, but I never hit a patch of ice on the highway coming down. But it's pretty windy, and you know if you hit a patch of ice, you're going down the hill, and it's over because <laughs> it's like it's like sheer cliffs. So, um, so I was, I was kind of, I think I tilted my head, you know, kind of how, you know how you lean over a stern wheel sometimes and it's kind of like you're trying to get the best view. So that I think the tension jacked my nerve up, which is a drag because it'll take a couple weeks for this tingling to go away. I'm trying. And, and once you, once I pinch the nerve, it swells and makes it easier to pinch. So the only thing that helps is a leave. And I've only taken two so far in the last 10 days. I don't want to take too many of those. So, all right. So now let's just try to get, let's just do the one and, okay? So I'm gonna hit the, get that G note with that first finger. And then with your second and third finger, get the, get the F and the B here. Okay, that seventh and that third, like that. Just do that. This is how I work through any difficult passage I break it into tiny little sections, get each section down, and then try to put them together. Okay? I mean, that right there is a great voicing. I mean, right there you've got three of the four notes in a G7 chord. This is like so full. That's so big. It's like sometimes annoying. You, want, you just want a little... 
just do that. You can use that chord sometimes, depending on the genre. Okay, so now what I want to do is hit the that root note, hit the chord, and then go to that B note. Like that. Now, I'm swinging it a little bit, which means I'm placing that, that chord not quite on the end of one. I'm putting it a little beyond the end of one, okay? Um, if I were to put it on, on the exact end of one, it would sound like this. Right? Boom, and, uh, 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 one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three. We're very robotic. Now, there's nothing wrong with, with solid eighth notes. You know, solid eighth notes are used in rock all the time. But I, we call them solid eighth notes. I call them solid eighth notes. I don't know if anybody else calls them solid. But straight eighths. Um, is another term for it, but it's just like mm, that drum, like a drum machine kind of thing. Now drum machines you can do, <laughs> well, way back then you could do swing on a drum machine. So well, it's not like you couldn't, that, that you, you can't really say straight like a drum machine because drum machines have been able to swing. But when you swing it, you've got these, you've got these three notes and they're, you know, it, a, a straight eights are, they're, uh, here's, wait, see, from your perspective, okay, that's one. <laughs> and here's two, here's the end of one, okay? And it's fairly even right there. But if I delay the end of one, it becomes a, more of a swing. Does that make sense? So it's almost like you're you're kind of anticipating too. Okay. All right, I'll go slow here. Hit the root, hit the chord, and hit the the third, the three of the chord. Okay. Like that. So I'm using my first finger for those two notes. my pinky it's 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 getting ready to go over here you see that I'm not tucking it back like that I got my pinky out here now if you have a problem tucking it back um, I've got an exercise that I do uh, that's really good for kind of building that finger independence and we can talk about that if you want it's not fun <laughs> but what it does it it helps to force your fingers to work independently you know how when you bend one finger they all tend to follow this helps to kind of prevent that see my pinky is kind of getting ready to go mainly because I know I'm gonna hit this note that's why my pinky's ready to go if I was gonna go something like that or I might might not bring my pinky out it might not naturally come out or release uh, to be used but okay so we got the root the chord we get the third now reach out with the pinky get the fifth fret of the fifth string and that's the D that's a that's the fifth of, of the G chord and then back to the third and then we're gonna go like this. So again, let's play that bass line with just the first finger and the pinky. Yes, thank you, Sam. That's exactly that chord. But what's happening, Sam, when I'm, when I'm playing this chord, I've already got my first finger off the string, I think. Because I, I don't want that necessarily. There are times when you want that, where you want the two, the, they all, them to all ring out together. Hey, Jack, what's going on? Anybody new else know I haven't said hi to yet? I don't think so. Is Dennis, oh, Dennis is here. So, Dennis, I was hanging out with Paul Davids on Friday from Holland. I mean, that this alone is fun to play. Once you have this down, now you'll notice sometimes I'm squeezing my pinky in there. I'm not even sure why I'm doing that. So instead of playing the, the guide tones with my first and third finger, I'm using my, I don't know why I'm doing that, but it just, it just almost feels more comfortable to kind of have my hand nice and compact like that. So the, my third finger isn't doing anything here. It looks like it's doing something, but it's not. Okay. But... For, for this purpose of this, I'll try to... Now, if you have that down... Okay. So, we again, we're doing... Go to the C note. Okay, so let's do that. With your second figure. Okay. Now we're at the four chord. So now 
more on the downbeat of that four chord. You see down here, right here, this is these numbers here. This is not my phone number. This is <laughs> uh, it's almost a phone number though, isn't it? Um, this is uh, the the order of chords in a standard blues progression. The one chord, the four chord, the one chord twice, the four chord twice, the one chord twice, the five chord, the four chord, the one chord, the five chord. It's, it's a very basic standard blues progression. Hey, Sunshine, what's going on? Heidi, what's going on? I actually knew a girl named Sunshine in Indiana. Or that's what she wanted to be called. <laughs> I forget what her first name really was. Um... So then, so we got the, the one chord down, and there's the there's the root note of the C chord, the two, the four chord, okay. Uh, I, am I hammering on the G on the sixth string? No. You could, I guess. You talking about doing that? That yeah, I don't know. If I could do that. That's like one of those guys that do this kind of thing. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I couldn't do that. Not my thing. <laughs> you, like, you like what I did there? <laughs> you knew what I meant though. See, that's what's stupid is you actually knew exactly what I meant. I can't, I, I got called to do a session where they wanted me to do that kind of thing. And I'm just like, yeah, you're gonna have to call someone else. The problem with calling one of those people that does that is that they're never used to really playing with click or, or playing specific notes at specific times. They're just kind of coming up with something that's cool and then memorizing it. And uh, so for session work, it's not, you know, I ended up doing something for him that worked for him. I figured out something. Probably did like a dad gad tuning. Because the dad gad gives you that power chord so you can do this and get power chords with your right hand if you want to do stuff. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Um, so there's our five, one chord. Now here's the here's the root note of the C chord, and then we're going to just take this shape and move it down one fret, and we get the second fret and the and the third fret. Uh, but we're going to play it with our first finger and our third finger. Okay. And so that creates a C seven chord. Do that with me. Hit that hit that C note. Fifth fret, fifth. I'm sorry, third fret, fifth string, and then the chords. Thanks, Bruce. Oof. Okay, so there's our four, and we could even do. Here's the five, a uh, one. Here's the four. You can practice that too. These are guy tones. So that's all that's happening harmonically. And the bass is going like that. It's funny, when you add the chords in, it doesn't sound like the bass is doing that. That sounds dorky, but when you hear it, when you hear it with the harmonies, it doesn't sound dorky. Weird. So there's what we're gonna do over the G chord. And then over the C, we're gonna do this. Check this out. Okay, we got that, right? We got our chord, C chord, with our swung eighth note in there. The chord's on the kind of swung eighth. And then I'm just gonna hit open E, bottom string, first fret, second fret, and then back to the beginning. What I'm doing there is I'm just I'm hitting the C note, and so for our bass line for the C chord, I'm hitting the root on the downbeat, which is always good. Um, it if you're a bass player or if you're a guitar player playing a bass line um, with chords, you, if you play the root of the chord on the downbeat when the downbeat is beat one, um, it kind of it. it kind of makes it clear that you know what you're doing. Now, if you've got two bars of a chord, like you see the the uh, bar, bar three and four of the standard blues right here, there's two ones in a row. So maybe you could do. See, 
I went there, and then I went up to this. That's also, oops, those are both G7 guide tones. Same shape, just up here instead of down here. Um, and so you, I'm not, I'm playing the root, third, four, fifth, sixth, seventh, six, five, three, and then maybe this. And, that, and then now I've got two, two bars of C, so you can come up with something to do for there, but. Um, and so you don't necessarily need to hit the root on the downbeat if you're playing a chord two bars in a row. All right, but we're not going to get that far. We're, we're just going to loop two chords today. That's all we're going to do. Because what I want you to do is I want you to be able to play something with a walking bass. Um, and um, that way, once you have something like this, it's even conceptually. And you can hear me slapping the string. I'm kind of hitting the string like this so it kind of gets you hear the string and you hear the string hitting the frets uh, to almost give it an upright slap like if he's pulling it or whatever you know like when they pull the string and they let it go it's like an arrow it's like a bow and arrow thing and they're they're doing that to get that slap sound and they can also do it by hitting it um, kind of hitting and plucking at the same time uh, but you can do it both ways on an upright and that's kind of what we're going for we're kind of going for like a, a jazzy upright bass player with a guitar player kind of vibe. So that's the first one. Um, let's see, a bit tricky because I'm switching the bass finger from the middle to the index when going from G to C. Uh, when I'm going from... Yeah, I'm using, that's right, I'm using my, I'm actually going from an index to the middle finger for the C, right? Is that what you mean? And then, so that, and again, you, if you can get this down, and then get this, that down, and then this, and then add, and then add the next note, and just do it in, in bite, you know, bite-sized pieces and get, make the bites bigger and bigger as you go. I don't know what that means. All right, so. Um, yeah. And then when you get to the C, you play this, play the chord. And now it's all index fingers. Open E. I'm just using the index finger like this. So do that for me. Open E, first fret, second fret, third fret. And so we're starting out here when we play this note here. That's the root of the C chord. And then I'm hitting the third of the C chord. And I could go to the fifth, like do the same thing we did here where we went one, three, five, three, one, three, one, three, five, three, one, three, five. Excuse me, I could do that, um, but it's, it's not a chromatic, I like to have that chromatic one fret, half step, whatever, however you want to think of it, um, lead to the next note. So like you'll notice when we did the G, we went G, A, I'm sorry, G, B, D, B, and that's one fret away from the C. So it makes for a really, really strong resolution to the C. All right, so um, when we get to the C, I go to the E, and then I want to get to this note, and I have two more notes to go, and I have two more notes in between the E and the G, so why not just go chromatically? That's a very bass player thing to do. In fact, <laughs> if you're playing bass in a jazz situation and you get lost, just start, just start playing chromatic lines until you, until you can find your way back. just think you're like oh man he's being jazzy <laughs> no you're just being lost <laughs> but it's true it's like a total trick <clears throat> all right so um 
So the whole thing together, I'll play it at tempo just for a second. The idea is just to get that down. Uh, and then if you get that down, you can always put um, a chord like you have on the and of one, you can put another chord on the and of three. It's gonna require you to kind of figure out what the best way to finger it, like this. Yeah, that's hard. But once you get it down, and this is a super good finger independence kind of exercise, even just this G thing. Yeah, that's crazy. from the, the one chord to the four chord I'm I'm on the B note and that's the third of the G chord the one chord and I'm going to the four chord right there boom and then I make the little little, little chord there again I'm using my second I mean my first and third finger okay do that for me play play so this is the C chord so here's the third and here's the seventh I'm on the third fret uh, sorry second second fret of the fourth string and third fret of the third string. Okay, and you see I'm using those two fingers there. My, my second finger is not being used because I'm using it for the bass note. And from there, it's pretty easy. Okay, but see this? See that? Make that chord. This, that's our C7, so there's an E and a B flat. Okay, now take your hand off, do this, and then make it again off make it again okay I do that because I want your fingers to forget and then remember you know it's kind of this this neural pathway thing you know it's real easy if you just go oh, okay so this make this okay make it again okay make it again if you leave your fingers right on top of it well it's totally easy to make it again but I want you to take your hand away and make it again I did that with when we were learning G chord take your hand away now find all those places to play the G chord, C chord, take your hand away, all that, so. All right, so, um, so we have the G, and, it, and you can practice this too. Sam, that might be a good thing to do to help you kind of get used to the the voicings and what you're. This would be one and three, four, one and two, three. Again, I'm not letting them ring though. That would be different if I went. It's, it'd be all. It'd be almost impossible to keep them ringing out. Um, I would have to totally finger different ways. You don't want them to ring out. That's not, you know, it's like bam. almost like almost you can think of yourself as a, a horn section at that point. It should you like that? Bam. much what all I wanted to get done today um, because I wanted you to be able to um, kind of see a little victory right a little victory there um, you know what I'll do after we're done I'll I'll uh, I'll tab that out and and put put it in the discord all right so I'll tab out that um, that little it's just two bars so it shouldn't take me too long to tab it. I have to remember how to do tab on finale. <laughs> Every time I do, I'm like, oh, dang it. I forgot to do, oh, dang it. Okay, and I have to undo and then like try it. Okay, this way. It should be easier than it is, but it's not. So, uh, and that's my understanding talking to uh, any, if you're interested in getting um, notation software and what that is, is music notation software. Um, if you're interested in getting into that, if you're, uh, one reason to learn to do it is it, it's just another job you can do as a musician. 
Um, I actually got paid to create charts. Um, I did it for years. I don't do it anymore, but I got pretty fast at it. Um, and, and then I would get, you know, if somebody wanted the same song I already did in a different key, then I could charge them for the full price, but then I'd send them the, I just hit one button, change the key, and then I'd re, you know, rebounce it or print it or create a PDF and send it, and I, I could charge the full price for it. So, um, so it's kind of a, you know, sometimes it wouldn't make sense that making the chart would take longer than the pay, you know, it would be right at minimum wage or something, but then, you know, later when they wanted another copy, you know, another copy of the chart in a different key, um, I would get paid the same amount. So that ended up being a good deal. Um, so, hey, Catherine, what's going on? So, yeah, I don't know why this photo will not drag over. Okay, let me do this. Let me do it. Okay, I'm going to just do a screen grab of this. And that will... Well, where is it? Oh, there. Let's hit go. Show up on my desktop. Now, see, this is a bigger file. And there it is. So why is a... So a pings will show up, but JPEGs won't. Um, so there's me and Paul here in the studio. Um, yeah, so you you can see that, you know that's here, right? You see, yeah, you can see the, over here you see the, where is it? There it is. The, the uh, that's the um, Tahitian ukulele. They loved all the instruments. They were like really into that. He's hopefully we can do we can do more videos I would love to I mean I'm I'm happy to help him if I get if I get subscribers great if I don't it doesn't matter I, you know it, it's I think he's great um, I love and we, we became fast friends um, I like helping friends so um, I think he's you know, I like you know, he's really good at what he does he's really good um, and the ladies love him <laughs> so, let's see is this the one yep so here he is playing my Martin baritone. Oops. Oh, there he is. There he is, right there, playing the Martin baritone. Sit, sitting right there in that chair right there. See? So he was really here. Paul is um, from Rotterdam, Netherlands. Yep. Yep, Jan, you know that. Yep, yeah, Rotterdam. So I, who knows? I could end up going to Rotterdam to, to, to hang out with them. Um, I loved I loved Holland. I mean, I just really did. It was just wonderful. Um, and um, we're going back. We're going back to Europe this summer. Um, but uh, at, at this point, I'm kind of keeping on the DL. <laughs> so, but we've got our flights and our. We got our Airbnb. Oh no, we, we did a VRBO and flights. Yeah, and uh, I just need to, the only thing I need to do is pay for the rest of the VRBO. That's not due until next month, and then um, uh, one hotel night. I need a hotel night somewhere, and so uh, just because I wanted to make sure that we got to the airport early enough, so I want to get a hotel fairly close to the airport. I haven't picked that one yet, though. Um, um, yeah, no worries, Sam. Um, so yeah, so Paul came by and we filmed for, gosh, we filmed for a couple hours, uh, you know, <laughs> like I said, we, we could have done, we could have easily done five videos, but he, he, had, there was a specific subject he wanted to talk about with me. And, uh, and so I don't want to, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, say what that is. I want him to release it first, and we'll talk about it after that. So, um, but yeah, Travis Les his Travis lesson is very good. It is a very good. I've taught Travis lessons, and, and um, it's a really, really hard thing to teach. And he did a great job on it. He did. I was like, dang it, you know, he was a teacher too, um, and I doubt he does private lessons anymore. But like me, I taught privately for thirty-five years. From the age of 15 to the age of 50. And um, and I've told you why I quit playing, teaching. Well, for one thing, I didn't, I, I mainly taught, well, just like we do any job, we need the income. So I taught um, because uh, it, it was a fairly good income. 
you know, at the end, I think, what was I charging, 70 an hour or something? So that's pretty darn good. Um, I occasionally will teach now, but it's, it's like artists that, you know, like pop stars or something, or actors. And so I charge a lot more now for that. Um, but, where's Sadie? Oh, Discord says unable to invite. Weird. Oh, I, I can't click on it because if I click on it, it'll it'll go away from this window and then it'll log me. I did that once before <laughs> to you guys. If I click on that link, it'll it'll take that window and I guess I could right click on it and open in a new window or something like that. Uh, but that should be the that should be the end. Oh, um, Dennis, is there a new invite link that I should start including in there? Is it something change? That could have happened. I don't know, but Sadie, thanks for doing, thanks for clicking on it and seeing. Um, but yeah, I will, I will create a PDF. And not a, well, it won't be a PDF. It'll just be a ping. I'll just do a screen grab of that, of just the little snippet that I wanted you to get down today. And again, it's just, I want you to be able to have a tiny victory. A tiny victory can lead to much, many more victories. <laughs> going on here so if you can get this down you're like that's pretty good and uh, it's kind of like what's the remember the Boy Scout Boy Scout motto be prepared it's kind of like that guitar playing is very much about that particularly in classical guitar they'll be like okay finger it this way and I'm like why do I have to finger it that way that's not very you know natural and it's like oh because the next three notes are gonna benefit from you playing it that way. It's like, yeah, I would never play it that way, but it's preparing me for that next phrase or the next four or five, six notes, two notes, one note, doesn't matter. But uh, so sometimes the fingerings can be a little bit weird, but it's because you're preparing yourself for that next thing. And so that's kind of what this is. So I, I will, uh, um, can I do fingering on it? That's a lot more work to add fingerings in there, but I might, let me try that. Although I probably would put the fingerings on the music notation, not on the tab, because fingerings tend to be numbers and tab is numbers, and it would be confusing to have one next to the three and a, a, a two and a three next to the three and the four. So usually when you see fingerings, it's, a, it's on the music. So if you want to see the fingerings, you're going to look straight up from the, from, uh, uh, the the uh, tab and look at the music notation and it'll tell you what fingers to use on those notes um, and then if you can get to the point where you're not reading the tab but you're actually reading the music notation that's kind of cool so uh, yeah I do have the discord app on my phone you're right Paul or Bruce it does definitely work better on the app can't wait for the tab well I suppose I could do it right now <laughs> But I don't, I don't have it on this computer. I have to do it on my laptop. You really want to see me sitting over there on the laptop? I hope Paul's not watching this video. He's going to be like, why are my pictures up there? <laughs> he said it was okay to post. So I'm like, I'm not, it's not a shrine to Paul. <laughs> it's like, no, okay, let me delete these because that's pretty, although I'm going to keep that one up, the two of us together. And that's, I like that photo. It's a nice photo. He's taller than I thought too. I was wondering before he got here, I was like, is he going to be really short? Like, am, we, am I going to be like really like surprised? Like, oh my gosh, he's only 5'2". <laughs> uh, but um, he, uh, yeah, he was tall. He was like, I think he's 6'2". Alex was here. We went to coffee afterwards and um, Alex was probably an inch or two taller than him. And then his, his camera guy was tall too. So it's that, that good, you know, Nordic stock, right? <laughs> well, it's true. When we went to when we went to Holland, everybody was pretty tall. I mean, it was a lot of tall people in Holland. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a thing. Um, when I went to Korea, um, I felt tall. When I went to South Korea, I felt very tall. Except my guitar tech when I toured Korea, he, his name was June. And he was really tall. For a Korean guy, he was like 6'4 or something. 
uh, and uh, ex-military. Man, he, <laughs> and he knew what he was doing. I mean, he was very vigilant about my guitar setup. Like, he, and this is before cell phones had cameras and stuff like that. He took pictures. He had pictures of everything, my setup, exactly how I, like, after the gig, how I moved his stuff around the first gig. He took pictures of it, and it was set up that way from then on. Like, everything, the mic stand, everything was exactly the same every show. I was like, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I, need a, I, need a, I need a guitar tech everywhere I go. Um, Okay, I'll, I'll add fingering. Yeah, it's it's um, it's not it's not much di it's not much more difficult to do. And in fact, there's a, probably a shortcut that I could learn. Again, there's only going to be two bars of music, so it's going to be a really really short um, piece of music. But uh, I'll uh, I'll do it as soon as I'm done here, and I'm probably going to stop a little sooner than later. It's quiet right now at the construction site. It's a couple couple houses down. They're building two giant houses in their backyard. I'm like, how did you get permits to do that? I, California, they got rid of the single family designation. So anybody can build an apartment building on their property, which is kind of annoying because it's going to kill property values. And they're, they're just, it's, you know, in fact, it's already started to slow property values um, and uh, increase. It slowed the increase. And, Property values, you know, you high property values means high property taxes. But uh, what do I know? Uh, but I think they're trying to increase housing. Uh, but I really doubt if anybody in Beverly Hills is going to be allowed to build an apartment building on their <laughs> on their property. So I think you can have as much as eight units. I don't know. Maybe it's four. Depend. I think on my property because I'm a double lot, I could have eight units on my property. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. I managed an apartment building for 25 years. The last thing I want to do is manage properties. And again, that was, it, it was, it was great. It was a blessing. It allowed us, to, it allowed me to stay in the music business because I didn't have to pay rent for 25 years. Um, it allowed me to just kind of slowly build my career. Um, but it's also kind of a pain when you have morons <laughs> living in your building. That's like the light bulb goes out and they said, is that your responsibility? My you have to change the light bulbs, right? And replace them, right? I said, no, no. What about the smoke detectors, the batteries and smoke detectors? You know, I'd get phone calls at three in the morning. My smoke smoke detector's going off. And I'd be like, well, change the battery. I don't have any. <sighs> so um, I had one tenant. The city of Pasadena was going to, on our block, was going to turn off the power for the day because they had to replace the transformer. And they put notes on everybody's door that for, from, you know, for eight hours, from like nine in the morning till four in the afternoon, the power is going to be off. And one of the tenants came to me and said, does that mean the refrigerator is not going to be on? <laughs> I said, well, unless you have some magic refrigerator that doesn't use electricity, then yes. <laughs> and they said, so should I throw out all my food? And I'm like, no, just don't open the fridge. <laughs> it should be fine. I was just like, oh my gosh. I don't know. Sometimes it was funny. Uh, and then you have the people that perpetually lock in. Uh, poor Alex is managing the building now. God bless him. Uh, but again, it's it's a blessing because, the, like I said, free rent and a beautiful part of it, Pasadena. You can't beat that, right? Um. Doo -doo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I say, okay, that's good to know, Sadie. So you're just on a different computer. So, um, but yeah, he's doing it now, but he's had to deal with, you know, particular, you know, sometimes certain tenants would constantly lock themselves out. It's like, really? I mean, I understand doing it once, but four times? <laughs> it's like, I had tenants, I was like... And eventually they would just start hiding keys in certain places outside their apartment or something. And I'm like, yeah, I guess you could do that. Um, but uh, the, um, uh, yeah, so the, the uh, yeah, I would get a call sometimes at two in the morning. Uh, and so consequently, I kind of had to leave my phone on at night. 
for those kind of emergencies. Now, I, you know, but I had a broken pipe at two in the morning one time at flooding someone's apartment. And it was upstairs unit, so it was flooding two apartments. The upstairs unit was falling down into the downstairs unit. Uh, I think I told that story once, but yeah, it's, 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 yeah, I'm, I have zero interest in having any rental property, you know, ADUs or anything like the ADUs, uh, what's ADU stand for? Something unit, uh, additional domestic unit or something, um, you know, it, not an uncommon thing to have like an ADU for, you know, mother-in-law of course, you, you used to call it a mother-in-law's apartment. Um, and, um, I would, if, if my mother-in-law wanted to move in with us, we'd just put her in Emma's room. I mean, it would be fine. We would, she wouldn't need her own apartment. But um, uh, but that's that was kind of the origin of it. You know, you'd have a house and then you have another power, another little mini house on it or something like that. That was kind of the origin. But anyway, this is not the subject at, <laughs> at hand. We're losing viewers. We didn't, it was, yeah, we got up to 30. I'm like, oh, I didn't realize that. We were at 30 at one point. Um... So let's see what else is going on. Anybody, anybody got any questions for me? I'm happy to take any, take a question. Um, and Paul does really have very pretty blue eyes. <laughs> but the question, oh, hey. Oh, you got it. Oh, good. Okay, that's great. And it's probably something you, Barada, Baraba, I never know what to say, Baraba. Uh, Baraba, it's probably something you never really messed with before. Um, and you can apply it. Oh, wait, here's another, you know, we can make this, do a different thing with this. Check this out. Um, let's see, how would I do it? Now? So if you took that G7 and made it a G minor seven, it would be these two notes, three, three, but you wouldn't do, I mean, if, if you did do the B natural as a bass line, then what you got here, so check this out. Hear that chord? Play that chord for me. Three, two, three, three. Bottom four strings. You know what that is? Believe it or not, that's the Jimi Hendrix chord. Okay, listen to this. G, B, F, B flat, or actually A sharp, because it's a sharp nine. A is the nine of G, don't worry, no quiz. Okay. It's kind of a muddy version of that. That's the more common version. And that one would be uh, 10, 9, 10, 11. Well, if you play it here, see, that's the same chord. That's a, a G7 sharp 9. This is an E7 sharp 9. That's the Hendrix chord. So, um, so if you did that, like if you did the minor seventh, it would kind of be, kind of be implying that. But you might, if you really want to do a G minor chord, so you could do a chord progression where it's G minor seven to C seven, and that would be kind of a G Dorian vamp. Um, very common, very very common in jazz to, for it to. And basically, what you're playing there is a two five and never going to the one. You're just vamping between the two and the five in the key of F. The one would be F. And I'm just using root notes and guide tones to create that progression I was going. That's the harmony I'm playing. And that's pretty cool, right? But this is a two, five, one, six, two, five, one, and I'm doing a dominant six. But I could do minor. Uh, but a lot of times you can, it'll jam over just the two and the five, just back and forth. So it'd be like. Uh, I think, no, that would be, that's two minor chords. So, 
Uh, that's a uh, take five. It's a one. Oops. I'm trying to do it in five. <laughs> Take five, basically the first two chords of Take Five, by uh, dang it, I want to say Paul Desmond, but that's who did it, played the song on sax. Uh, uh, shoot, he also did Blue Rondo a la Kirk. How do you say that? Is that <laughs> Something like that, though. Burb Brubeck, thank you, Dave Brubeck. Ah, thank you, Catherine. Catherine's hip. I can tell Catherine's a hip person. Um, but yeah, so you you could turn this into a. You could do the same C bass line, but I'm gonna have to take that. I'm gonna have to take that B down to the first fret to a B flat to imply the G minor chord. You can see here I'm playing this with my second finger on the, the G note, and then I'm playing the, the, the dyad, the two note chord, um, with my third finger and fourth finger. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Like this. That's a great vamp too. There's a lot of R and B songs. Um, I think of uh, shout. You know, you know, you make me want it. That's not the key. I can't remember of it. Um, Knock on wood. I think is. Is also a one four progression. Pretty much the whole song. A uh, lot of like soul songs of the 60s, uh, R&B songs of the 60s, sometimes were just two chords and it would be the one and the four and dominant seven. So, so that's a pretty common chord progression, even just playing the first two chords of a blues progression. And I said this before, in jazz, the two most common progressions are the two, five, one progression of which the G minor to the C is uh, G minor to the C is a 2-5. So there's the most common jazz progression. And then the other most common jazz progression is just a standard blues progression. A lot of jazz standards are written over the blues, um, like uh, Blue Monk, uh, a Blue Bassa. Um, so that's not too unusual. Uh, like I said, a lot of lot of jazz songs written over blues progression. Those are just the two most common. But at the same time, there's thousands of different progressions for jazz songs. So there's no real like oh a jazz progression has to be this this uh, a jazz song has to use these chords or this progression or progression of chords. Not at all true. Jazz is a clean slate every time somebody sits down to write something. Um, unlike blues music, blues typically does have to kind of follow this this form here, uh, some some variation on this form, usually 12 bar phrases. So blues does have tend to have certain rules. Um, um, and so uh, 
and and that makes it familiar almost immediately so oh you saw Brubeck 30 years ago oh, before you were born Catherine oh nice did I, I've never seen Brubeck I I never saw him. I uh, I saw a few people. I saw some jazz stuff. Hey, Dan, what's going on? Oh, nice. Well, I wonder how many views he'll get of this video. We'll see. We filmed a video. Uh, like, I'm not going to talk about the subject. I want him to release that and, and it, to be a surprise. Um, but... Um, um, So, uh, and once he does release it, then I'll, I'll probably do something. About, we'll talk about it and everything. So it'll be fun. I, I have no idea. I've done, it's so funny too, because you just never know how they're going to edit it together. I remember way back when Beth and I had a band and, and we, we released our first record and I, I did an interview on the phone with a friend of ours who was a journalist. And uh, she, she interviewed me, I don't remember, 20 minutes, something like that, and asked me questions and things like that. And I told her, you know, about the band, about the music, things like that. And when I and then, and it wasn't for any magazine. It was like for a press kit that we were doing. And so she sent me the article she wrote. I think I don't know if I paid her to do it. She was a friend. I think she just did it for free. Um, <clears throat> and uh, when I got the article, I was like, I didn't say that. <laughs> I'm like, I'm reading it. I didn't say that either. I'm like, well, that's not what I meant. <laughs> It's, it's just like it was a it was actually a real big lesson when because it wasn't that she necessarily misconstrued what I said. It wasn't video. Obviously, it wasn't tape recorded. She just was writing notes as I was talking. But yeah, this is story time. But it was one of those things where she kind of brought what she thought I was doing. Uh, or what she thought all musicians did or what she thought bands were about to the interview and she had she already had the answers in her head before i said them even though i my answers didn't necessarily jive which was what she was thinking i was going to say so it was kind of an interesting thing it's like i i wish i could remember the any any examples of it but um uh she um She, she basically, um, you know, kind of the, like, it was more, it was more like, what am I trying to say? Um, co conceptual stuff, like the, 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 what the band is trying to do, that kind of thing. And, uh, or what, you know, what our theme is or what our music is about or whatever. And it was like, wait, it's not, I mean, in some ways she made it sound a little bit bigger and more grandiose than I was saying. So that wasn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, but it was just funny that she, she's, I, 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 like, I don't remember saying that. That's not something, you know, afterwards I was like, that's not something I would have ever said. I don't necessarily disagree with it, but I didn't say that. Um, so it's, it's just, it's weird being interviewed. And so with Paul, we'll see what they edit how they edit the video together when uh, when when it comes out, um, and who knows? I'm not sure when it's going. Like I said, we did, we talked so much. I think it was <laughs> almost two hours with two cameras. So he almost he probably has four hours of editing, and he he like me, he's not really. That's the worst part of the job is editing together something, um, especially when you know me. I'm kind of like, uh, let how about we talk about <laughs> this? I'm kind of all over the place. Um, so, oh, bye, Catherine. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what happens when Paul, you know, what, what he does. And he may turn it into, he could feasibly do two or three videos. We'll, we, I don't know, but he did say a couple times in the video, he's looking at the camera and says, I'll put a link to Tom's video about that down here, you know? So he's definitely going to promote me. Now, will I double my, will I go from a hundred thousand subscribers to 200,000? I mean, he's got 3 million subscribers. It, Pretty much every one of his videos um, get over a million views. Um, so I don't know. I mean, 
you see that with his sting one well now his sting one that was three weeks ago has nine hundred twenty seven thousand views um his same guitar four budgets uh, under a million views uh but just under from a m month ago uh open d a oh, beautiful tune oh, from a year ago has had yeah so his the open d tunings um do well oh, the collab ones the Improvise, and I wonder if he'll ever ask me to do one of those. I'm not really known for soloing or anything like that, uh, but he, I'm happy to do one if he does it. Um, that one, uh, he's got two and a half million views on it. So, again, I'm happy for him to, oh, yeah, John Mc, uh Yeah, he did one on, on uh, the Neon, um, yeah, four years ago. That's got four million views. So, I mean, my... Biggest video is what now? How many how many views do I have? Let's see. Uh, go to my channel. Yeah, I just don't get very very many views. It's just not. Um, yeah, so my tips for older beginners: three point six million views. And it's starting to wane. I mean, it's finally, it's still my number one video. When I look at uh, my dashboard, I go here and I look at my top videos. Boom. I just need to do more videos. It's just hard because I'm so busy right now, which I'm thrilled about. But uh, analytics, let's see. Yeah, seven tips. Um, yeah, not that many. You know, 1,400 views. Uh, play most any song in open D tuning. That one's got 402 views in the last, this is the last 48 hours. Um, and then it's seven song, or five songs with only two chords. That one is my first one I did or the second one I did. Bluegrass Jam Track. The Jam Tracks do pretty well. Um, fun Chords in Open G. Play most any song in da Dadgad. Um, in the last 48, you know, so... Yeah, I mean, it's just not, it's not a big enough source of revenue for me to justify to, you know, uh, eating too much into my free time. Now, um, I do have a video that I recorded when we were up in Idlewild, um, and I don't think I'll give you the title of it yet. I think, uh, maybe I already did, but see ya, see Sam. Um, but the um uh that i filmed one up there i was going to film two but I, I i just couldn't couldn't get to it i'm gonna have to film the other one though i it's kind of two videos that kind of go together so i'm gonna have to film both of them uh but i the one of them is a review of the gear i used so uh i will um i will i will do that one soon so all right now um So, like I said, any questions? Can I play a song on a guitar, Monkey? I don't know Monkey. <laughs> Is that the name of the song? I can play what we were working on, our lesson. And like I said, I'll do a tab for this and put it in the Discord. Now, here's another thing we could do with this, all right? Um, we could go... We could go chromatically down... go instead of going uh, G B D B I could go but the that works really well because we got B to C is chromatic right one fret away and it, nice nice resolution but if I were doing the minor one I might go I might go ahead and go chromatically down from the D to D flat to the C note Because I want that motion I want that half step motion um, but because I if I go G B flat D B flat to C that's not that's a whole step motion that's fine there's nothing wrong with that but this sounds better 
-hmm. right? That chromatic, something about having that one fret away. There's our one fret away from the G chord. And that goes to either the G7 or the G minor, it doesn't really matter. So I can go, you know. Or I could go. All right, and that's how you probably end the song. Um, I could also go down like that. I could go C, B flat, A, A flat, and then to the G. The idea is, the goal is to have three or four or five or six or 50 different ways of getting from one common chord to another common chord. Um, if I was going from like G7 to, to E flat seven, it might not be as common, it might not need it. Well, that's not bad. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move the, <laughs> take the picture of Paul then. Uh, that was a fun day though. It was a very fun day because um, we were talking about my favorite subject, me. <laughs> I love what what movie is that from? Where um, uh, Bette Midler said, "So enough about me. What do you think about me?" <laughs> was that ruthless people? Maybe. Uh, anyway, she's funny. Bette Midler is a funny, funny lady. <clears throat> so, all right. So we're going to, um, I'm going to continue on this. Uh, okay. So I'm going to log off now and I'm going to go do a PDF for it. And I'm going to, uh, I'm sorry, a little, uh, just a two bar. Um, and I'll do a, whatchamacallit, um, tab. I'll tab it out and I'll put fingering in there and I'll put it in the discord, the lessons. Okay. Yeah, EP, EP Zick, nice to see you. Um, monkey. <laughs> I don't know what you meant by that. Uh, but you replied, yeah. So, yeah, I generally don't do covers. We did do some covers. I, uh, recently, we did some cover lessons. Um, it's not too bad. I, I just, I, um, I, in fact, I asked Paul about this, and, and I, I said, well, um, I said, I don't know if me playing this is going to get you a copyright strike. And he says, it's fine. I, he doesn't have to, he can do a, um, a royalty share um, with, the, with uh, the Bieber thing if, if it ends up happening. He didn't think it would. Oh, I kind of told you what I was doing. Anyway, so um, <laughs> we'll stop there. Um, but, uh, there, the thing we did might get a copyright strike, but it may not. We'll see. Um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it, it's not a strike if you let them take, you know, it, it doesn't count against you unless you say, no, I own this and you don't. That's when it counts against you. Um, what happens is they put, they get your, they get some or all of the royalties from the video and then, you know, they do a, maybe a royalty split or something. I'm not sure how that works. Uh, but anyway. So um, I'll do the tab right now, and then um, I'll post it, and you guys can, that way you have it. And then uh, now that I have the tab up, once I start the tab on it, that might not be so hard to kind of keep going on it. So I can keep adding to it as we go, because next week I want to I want to go either further into the blues progression, or maybe we'll do like a 2-5-1 progression, but we can go further into the blues progression. The main thing is just to get that little victory of playing those first two chords. And that's, that's all I'm going to tab out, just the first two chords, and then just loop it. Make a loop out of it, and just till you get it down. Start slow. Start slow. Do the exact fingering that I'm going to tell you to do, and then you'll be able to pick up the speed on it. And I mean, I don't know how fast you can play it. it was, I, I don't know how fast you want to play it. Blues. Uh, you know, and again, I hear this. I hear those. I hear that chord almost like a horn section, right? You got me a trumpet and a sax or something like that. That's kind of how I'm thinking of it on the guitar. 
So I'm being a bass player in a horn section when I'm doing that. All right. Hey, Ken, what's going on? Okay, I'm glad. Okay, so let me get on that now, and then I'll, I'll put it in the Discord. So go to the Discord link and join that. That's a join link. Go there, join up, and then it'll be under Tom's uh, lesson plans and PDFs or something like that. Um, it'll, be a, it'll be a screen grab of some kind. It'll be a ping or something. So take care, everyone. God bless you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next Monday. Bye-bye.